one, this is Rachelle. Thanks for clicking on my video. And I came in here today to talk about a subject that a lot of women discuss between each other. And y'all, I'm going to say right off this video, it's going to be long. Um, because I really want to get into this subject and talk about it like one girlfriend to another. Or, you know, like when I talk to my male friends and just discuss this whole thing about outside women, what we call side chicks or home wrecking hoes. Um, that's what one of my friends call them. Now, this thing that I want to talk about is because I have been watching a lot of videos here lately um, concerning Gabrielle Union and Alicia Keys. And I don't want to talk about their situations specifically, but I do want to talk about outside women and, you know, women that, you know, date married men or men that are in committed relationships. Now, let me just tell y'all at the outset, I am a woman that has been on both sides of it. Now, let me clarify that before y'all go off on me. I have been, if you are familiar with the song where it says, um, hello, Shirley, or hello, Barbara, this is Shirley, and she basically calling the mistress about messing with her man. I have been on both sides of that. I have been a mistress, but let me explain it so you guys will understand. When I was younger, and I mean at the end of my age, it was called teen. Okay, I was like 19 or so, and I met this guy who actually lived with a girl, you know, and we met at work and we started dating. And a little bit after, you know, we started dating, he told me that he lived with a girl that he had been living with her for a year. Now, going into the relationship, I didn't know that he actually lived with someone in defense. But here's the bad part. I continued the relationship. Now, normally women will, you know, use the excuse of I was young. You know, when you're young, you do stupid things. I'm not even going to excuse my behavior because now that I'm 52 years old and I look back on it, it was wrong. As soon as I found out that he was living with someone, I should have broke it off with him. I was a woman that was hurting another woman. And now that I'm more mature and older, no matter the reason, I was basically a mistress. Even though those two weren't married, they had been living together for a year. And when I look back on it now at this age, because I always talk about looking in the rearview mirror of your life. You know, when you get to this age, you start thinking about things that you did when you were younger. And that's one of the things that I wish I could go back and change because what I did was wrong. No matter if they were married, if they were living together for a year, they were in a committed relationship. And I'm pretty sure that there were instances where he left the home and she didn't want him to leave. And she probably suspected that he was cheating on her and I was the person that he was cheating with. Now, eventually that relationship ended, you know, basically it ran its course. I met another boy and I say boy, because like I said, we were 18, 19, 20, we were young, you know? So it's not like I was going to marry him. He was just one of the fellas that I dated along my life's journey. Let's just put it this way. Let's put it that way. But getting back to the subject of outside women and, you know, dating men that are in committed relationships or that are married. I'm going to say one thing about that. That older women, older folks have always said, the way that you get him is the way that you will lose him, you know? This thing where women nowadays 
side chicks these home wrecking hoes as my friend says my friend always refers to them as home wrecking hoes so i'm gonna use that in my video these women that that know that a guy is married and they continue on with the relationship like me they have to take responsibility for what they're doing you know i'm gonna get to the man but let's talk about these women now you have women out here that they think it's cute. They think it's, you know, well, the man said that there's problems at home and he's not happy. And, you know, um, that's why he's out here. That's why he's dating me. But like I said, when I look back on my experience, the first thing as a woman you should say is, you know, if you want to be with me, then you need to leave her and until he does you should not be in that relationship there is no excuse for that and trust me when i say that i have learned my lesson over the years i remember i did a video a little while ago and i didn't give my personal experience and i got a little pushback people telling me that I don't know what it's like. And that's why from now on, when I do videos, I'm going to give my personal experience, whether it be bad or good. And that's why at the beginning of this video, I said that I have been on both sides. I have been both the woman at home who's been being cheated on, and I have been the woman who has been cheating with the man. Although I was only like 18, 19. But still, it was cheating. So, what I feel about this is, as far as the women are concerned, you know in your heart that what you're doing is wrong. When this man is married, or he tells you he's in a committed relationship, and you continue on with it. There is no excuse. If he tells you that he's not happy, that things are not going right at home, why hasn't he left? If he tells you I'm staying because of the kids and all of that, you have to ask yourself as a woman, first of all, why am I putting myself in a situation where I am number two? I remember um, a couple days before Christmas, um, one of my um, childhood friends who was a man, put a, a post on Facebook and it says something like, um, it was on Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas to all the side chicks. And the reason why he did that, think about what he said. It was Christmas Eve and he said, Merry Christmas to the side chick. Because when a man is in a relationship, you know, a committed relationship, he's married, you know, he has a family or whatever. He is not going to spend Christmas outside of his home, but he may stop by the side chick's house on Christmas Eve, you know, give her her gift and explain that he's so sorry that he can't be with her on Christmas. She knows he has to be with his family. It would look too bad. So he visits her on Christmas Eve because she is the side chick, not the main chick. Now, these women that think it's cute and it's their right, one thing I'm going to tell y'all, you know, being the age that I am and, you know, having gone through ups and downs in my life, bumps and bruises in my life, you know, hiccups in my life, what I will say is when you do that, you are going to get that shit back. And what I mean by that is if you're messing around with someone that you know is in a relationship, has someone at home, a family, is married, and you're messing with him, when I tell you karma is a bitch, y'all, it is a bitch. It may not be that you get with someone and they do it to you, but what might happen is you will be going through a really bad patch in your life where 
everything is going wrong that you are not happy and you know it's so bad that at one point you ask god like what did i do to deserve this you know why is everything that i do touch with everything in my life going wrong and it could be that you're getting your karma for you know shit that you did to that man's woman at home karma will get your ass eventually and i'm telling y'all from experience that karma will get you because i have had you know times in my life where you know things are going wrong and i have come to that point where i say you know god what is going on you know why am i having all this bad luck and then being the age that i am i look back on my life and i say am i getting my just rewards for shit that i did when i was younger and the only thing i could come up with is yes i am you know and i'm the type of person that i accept responsibility for things that i have done i have learned that you you can't you can't go through life successfully and not expect you know not accept responsibilities responsibility for things that you have done to people wrongs that you have committed you're going to get that shit back if you believe in god and you believe in right and wrong you know that you're going to get payback for shit that you have done so when i look at these side chicks i don't understand now i don't understand now that i'm older wanting to be second knowing that this person that you are in a relationship with you lays beside another woman every night you know you have men saying well we don't have sex you know i'm just there for the kids there's no intimacy blah 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 you know the line that they give outside chicks you know when i was younger and naive and stuff i believed that stuff and it was when i was like between the ages of probably 18 to 22 you know you haven't had that much experience in life so when you know the person that i was cheating with you know he was cheating on this woman when he would tell me that i would believe it now of course i would ask him you know why don't you leave and you know i would fall for the bullshit that they said you know and and all of that y'all and at the age i am now i'm telling y'all i am so ashamed of my behavior my part in hurting another woman i'm so ashamed you know now let's get to these men that step outside of their home where they have a committed relationship when I was in my my marriage, you know, 17 years, I was cheated on. Um, and probably more than what I realized or more than what I found out. I referred to my ex as a male whore, you know. He liked the women and for some reason, the women liked him. I guess they thought, he was cute so he never had any problem finding someone outside of our relationship and cheating with him and i remember when i was going through that when i was younger you know i was in my 30s or so and i was i had two kids a home um this husband this man that i love and i accepted a lot of stuff you know i now that i'm taking responsibility for things in my life and I have you know matured I realized that a person cannot do anything more than what you allow them to do to you so I take partial blame in the cheating that was done on me because if I accepted him back then I was allowing it and the funny thing is y'all when I was going through this, being cheated on, I didn't blame the woman 
Like I see a lot of women nowadays, you know, instead of blaming the man that is in the relationship with them, they are more angry at that outside woman. And I don't understand that because you don't know what your man is telling her. You don't know. Now, of course, if she knows that he's in a relationship, then, you know, shame on her, but you have to hold that man accountable for stepping outside of his relationship. He knows what he has going on at home. He is the one that is the, you know, the biggest wrongdoer when in, in situations like this. I don't understand why, you know, women will get into a fight with the mistress and all of that. I never did that. And looking back, I don't know, you know, if on some level I was mature in a certain way where I knew that him cheating really had nothing to do with that outside woman. It was to do with him. I, in my situation, I don't believe, you know, that he was 100% truthful with them. And, you know, I believe that he told lies to justify what he was doing i believe that these women knew um that he you know was married and had kids and a home and all that i believe they knew that but i don't blame them you know i was never the woman that was following him get you know to where he was going and then get out and show my ass breaking out windows and slashing tires and i wasn't doing that eventually i grew up matured and I left his ass because at some point in my life I said to myself Rachelle do you love him and this relationship this union that you have with this man more than what you love yourself and when I was really in the heart of it I couldn't bring myself to answer that question because it hurt too bad because if I was allowing it then it seemed like to me I was loving him more than what I loved myself but as time went on and I matured and I realized my self-worth I couldn't do it anymore so the answer to that question was I love myself more than what I love him and y'all I'm gonna tell you something being totally honest, it took me a long uh, time to get there. Um, I put up with a lot. And during it, I was mad at him. But you know how when you're out of a relationship and you can look back objectively? Like I said, he didn't do anything more than what I allowed. If I had put my fucking foot down and said, you know what? I'm not taking this. Fuck you. I'm taking my kids and I'm out of here. You cheating bastard. If I had done that, you know, knowing my worth, I believe that things would have been different, you know? Now, on the same, same token, he could have said, see you later. I'm, you know, I'm not going to try to fight for this relationship. You know, I'm sick of your ass anyway. That's why I'm out here cheating. He could have done that. But, it wasn't about him. It was about me. You know, this thing nowadays where these men have these side chicks and they're having babies with them. And, you know, the woman at home is accepting of it and, and all of that. I, I feel sorry for them. You know, I feel sorry for the woman at home who is trying to hang on to a relationship that she knows in her heart is not good for her. What I used to say about my ex after I broke up with him, because I had to be honest and, and really look at my role in anything that happened in our relationship. And I came to this after many years of thinking about, you know, the years that I spent with him. I came to this. He was not a bad person. I would be lying if I said that he was a terrible person. 
here's what I say. He was just not good for me. I could not handle what he was dishing. I didn't know how to handle it. I truly believe that in the beginning, you know, when we first got together, maybe the first 10 years, we were in love. But we got together so young that neither one of us had a chance to really, really date while we were adults. And what I truly believe is that while I was the type of woman that when I told you I love you to my man, I meant that shit. I meant that no other man turned my head. But on in my case, my ex needed to sow his wild oats before he settled down. Because see, when I got with him, my commitment was true. Even if another man that I found attractive tried to talk to me, I would never talk back. You know, I would nip it in the bud immediately. I'm going to give you an example. My brother's best friend, I thought he was, y'all, he was cute as what, and he liked me. And my brother told me, you know, that his friend, John, I'm going to say his name. He was like, Rochelle, he likes you. Um, and what it was, I believe, is that this guy, John, had seen my ex out, I guess, doing his thing with other women. And he kind of felt sorry for me. Now, let me just tell you this. I was the type of woman I, you know, I worked, um, came home, kept my house clean, kept my kids well behaved and cooked and, and all that you know, did all the things that a, a spouse, a wife is supposed to do. I um, was a homebody and my ex was not. So I believe that I bored him, that I was not ex exciting enough for him. I used to always tell him it seemed like he was looking for the, a, a better deal than me. And, and, you know, for me to say that on this video, is really showing that I have evolved, I am mature, I am a woman, and I'm being honest. I don't think that once we got older, once those 17 years and, you know, year after year, day after day, month after month of being with someone, I think that eventually he lost interest, you know, and he was looking for a better deal out in the street. Now, on my side, I'm not going to say that there were things about him that didn't annoy me, bore me, um, whatever, but I was committed to him. That was me. I did not cheat. So when my brother's friend, you know, after my brother had let me know, you know, over a couple of years, you know, jokingly, he was like, um, you know, my friend likes you. And I knew that this guy was a decent guy, and I was very, very attracted to him and very flattered by, you know, the fact that he was interested in me. And my brother told me, he said, Rachel, what it is, is John likes what you, what you do as far as the home and being a good girl, and he, he really likes that. And, you know, that sometimes, you know, we would have cookouts at our house or people over and because this is my brother's best friend he would bring him now at the time when he was bringing his friend I didn't know that the friend had a little crush on me I had no idea I just you know thought of him as my brother's best friend and you know made him welcome in my home it was after about a year and a half maybe two you know my brother started telling me that and after he told me that you know, you're thinking, oh my God, you know, this guy, I think he's cute too. And um, I remember just being flattered. And even though, you know, I found him very attractive, I would never, you know, even entertain the idea of stepping out with him. And my brother made it very clear. And this guy, when he, once he knew that my brother had told me, you know, when my, he would be over, my ex would, you know, be in another room. He would, you know, smile at me, wink his eye. And I remember one time I was working out in my yard and, um, 
I was going to be having people over that day. So I was getting my house together and, you know, doing things in my yard. We owned our own home. So I think I was out there with my plants, my flowers or whatever. And um, my brother's friend pulled up and he was looking for my brother because my brother was going to bring his grill over. My brother, you know, had one of these big barrel grills. And because we were having a cookout, I our grill wasn't big enough. So my um, my brother's friend had come over to help my brother get the grill into the backyard and set up and all that. So, but he came a little bit earlier than what my brother, you know, uh, you know, th than my brother. So y'all, y'all could tell that this guy must have really, you know, fucked with my nerves because I'm stuttering and stammering. He, he was really a cutie pie and I couldn't even believe he liked me. But anyway, he pulls up, I'm in my yard and you know, we get to talking, you know, waiting on my brother to get there. And he just comes out and says, Rachelle, you know, I like you, right? And I'm sitting there like, oh my God, you know, I cannot believe he is actually, you know, telling me this. And he was like, I just like everything about you. I like that you, you know, you are a good girl, you know, even though, you know, he told me that he knew what was going on with my with my then husband and you know he had seen him out in the streets doing this thing and he asked me why do you stay why you know you're a good girl you're cute now this is the stuff this guy was telling me and he was like why do you stay he was like you could get any guy you know um and, and just telling me stuff and basically you know he let me know that he liked him and asked me again why do i stay and i told him because i made a commitment to this man i love him you know, at that time, I thought that my love for my ex would help us overcome what he was doing. Now, eventually, I knew that him, you know, being out in the streets cheating didn't have anything to do with me. It had everything to do with him. I even asked my ex one time. I was like, you know, eventually this is going to come to an end. This was one time when we were talking about our problems and where do we go from here and how do we, you know, salvage this marriage and all this stuff. And we were talking and I just asked him, I said, you know, if we ever break up one day, what are you going to tell your next woman? The reason why you left, you admit that it's nothing that I'm doing wrong, that, you know, it's something that you just basically got to get out your system. Now, this is what this man was telling me. You know, he would say stuff like Rochelle, you know, it's not you, it's me. I'm, you know, it's, it's something that I almost can't help. It's not that I don't love you. It's not that I don't want to be with you. I don't know why I cheat. Now, this is what he was telling me. Now, honestly, I think he was being honest, y'all. I don't think it was a load of bullshit. It was a, a young man because by that time we were in our mid thirties and in the scheme of life, we were still relatively young, but he was being honest. He was saying to me, I do love you. I do love what we have here. I don't know why I cheat. I cannot help myself. Now, at that point, I should have got up from the table and started packing my shit and took the kids and went on and it would have saved me a lot of heartache. But again, I'm there trying to salvage what we have. So that's what I told my brother's friend. Now, eventually, me and my husband, we parted and divorced and everything. And, you know, it came a time when my mother was throwing a cookout at her house. And um, she invited all of us. And my brother, of course, brought his best friend. Now, at this time, I am single. And, y'all, when I went to this cookout, I fixed myself up and all this, you know, you know how you're thinking, okay, now I'm single. Now, what's ironic is when I was single and ready to mingle, y'all, my brother's best friend was then married. And I remember we were in my mother's backyard and we were kind of trying to avoid each other. It was a little awkward, you know, because we knew we liked each other and, you know, it was awkward. So at one point we were sitting on a bench in my mother's backyard. And my brother's friend told me, you know, he said, you know, isn't this ironic? He said, had I known 
and this is where y'all I can't even believe I'm telling y'all all this. But he he said something like, "Had I known that you and I'm not gonna say my ex's name because he's deceased now, um, we're gonna break up." He was like, "I would have waited on you because I really like you." He said, "But you remember when you told me that you were committed to him?" And I was like, "Yeah." He said, "Well, now that I'm married, I'm committed to her." And he was like, "Even though." You know, I still like you and I will always like you. He was like, you know, I couldn't cheat on my wife. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm not asking you to do that. You know, we're just sitting here having a conversation and you brought this up. And because I was a woman that had been cheated on, you know, I would never do that to another woman. I just, I couldn't knowingly hurt a woman that is in a relationship, living with the man, has children by him. I couldn't knowingly do that. Now, I don't know. Maybe there have been times in my life, you know, now that I'm older and I split with my ex and I was out there dating, that I have may have been in situations where I was the mistress and didn't even know it. Because, you know, you date some men, you know, especially when you start getting into your 40s and stuff, you guys are not looking to really move in with each other. Well, in my case, I wasn't because I was still raising kids and I did not want to move any man in up over my children. I I just have a thing about, you know, just keeping it strictly dating and not moving every time Dick and Harry in my home. I did not grow up like that and I just don't believe in it. And I wanted to respect my children's home other than dating and maybe my kids seeing someone pick me up and drop me off and stuff i really didn't you know involve these men in my home life because first of all i wasn't serious with them and you know this was dating this was after being in a relationship for 17 years i needed to find out who i was as a woman because when i first got with my ex i was young 21 22 23 and i had been with him 17 years so i hadn't dated anyone else so i needed time to date a few guys before you know now that i'm in my late 30s early 40s before i even thought about anything serious so i guess the whole point of this video is bringing it back around to mistresses and outside women and are they really stealing your man i don't believe that a man can be stolen i believe that men do what they want to do these women just are willing participants you know those ones that know that a man has a relationship at home and don't mind being the side chick and believes that she is due certain rights and fuck the bitch at home and all that like i said y'all they will get back what they put out trust me when i say that yeah that shit is all cute and you know well to them all cute and you think you bad and you pulling her man from her and all that that's all cute when you're doing it but when it's time for you to get your comeuppance when it's time for karma to come knocking on your door you are going to regret everything that you did to that woman you are going to regret all the pain that you may have caused some woman who is in a relationship with a man now like i said i will never excuse the man who steps outside of his relationship because like I said earlier in the video, he knows what he has going on at home. He knows. Um, I'm going to end with this. I remember, you know, towards the end of my ex's life because he actually died. You know, he had cancer and, you know, it was horrible. It was just horrible. But there was a point when he came to my house. And this is, this is really you know, emotional for me to say this. When I went to the door, I don't open my door without thoroughly verifying who's on the other side. 
you will come to my house and you might stand there while I'm looking through the blinds and making sure I know who you are before I open up my door. So I was doing that on this particular day that he came over my house. I remember he has cancer. He is in the late stages of it. And when I looked through the blinds, I did not even know who he was. That's how bad he looked. So I'm standing there and I'm looking and, you know, eventually I realized, you know, when he turned, I was like, oh, this is blah, blah, blah. So I let him in. We had a conversation and, you know, eventually I asked him because, you know, it was very unusual for him to come over to my house. My kids weren't there. They were, well, my daughter was somewhere and my son was an adult. He didn't live at home anymore. So what are you coming over here? What is your purpose for this visit? And he told me that he wanted to apologize and he wanted to ask for my forgiveness for all the hurt that he had caused me. And what I told him is that there was no need for that because I had forgiven him years ago. And the reason why I had forgiven him is because if I had carried all that pain and hurt, and I know you guys have heard this saying before, you know, it was not affecting him, you know, carrying all that pain and hurt and um, hatred towards him. It wasn't affecting him because he was living his life with another woman and, you know, had been with her for a few years and wasn't thinking about me. So I had to let go of all that. I had to stop blaming him for, you know, causing me pain because once again, I will say he did not do anything more than what I allowed. So I told him that, and he told me that he, you know, knew he was dying because he had terminal cancer, and it was important for him to leave this earth knowing that I forgave him, and he wanted me to actually say the words, say his name, and then say, I forgive you, and I did, because forgiveness was not for him. Like I said, I know you guys have heard this before. That forgiveness was for me because raising, you know, children, I did not want to have that hatred in my heart and turn my children against him, you know, because what went on between me and him was between me and him. It was not between them, you know, so I wanted to be able to speak fondly of him so that they can form their own opinions of who he was as a man and a father. Like I said, he was not a bad guy. He just was not good for me. Basically, I couldn't handle him. The next woman he got, I don't think he cheated on her. I, you know, I really don't know because I'm not that type of ex that's calling him, you know, bothering him. As long as he paid his child support, I was fine. I was not calling him and any of that. The whole purpose of videos like these is to let you guys, and especially women who are side chicks, to know what you are destroying when you mess with a man that is in a relationship. It is so much there. There is a home. There are, there are commitments. There are children, possibly. There is a lot that's being destroyed. And if you can sit down and look yourself in the mirror and think that what you are doing is is okay, then hey. And as far as men, if you are a man watching this video and you you are stepping out on the woman you got at home and you are hurting her, let me tell y'all something. That hurt that you feel when you know that your man is out sleeping with another woman and as Whitney Houston would say, tracking dirt into your home, that is a hurt when you love someone that is just so deep. I remember times, y'all, where when I was allowing that shit to happen to me, I would cry so deeply and so hard when he was out in the streets, that I would wake up in the morning to go to work and go in the bathroom to brush my teeth and look up in the mirror. And my face was so swollen that I almost didn't recognize myself. 
the, the hurt was so deep, you know? How could this man that I love betray me like this? And that's why I don't feel nobody stole him. If if he loved me like I wanted to be loved, no one, no one could have stepped into that love. There would never be an outside woman, a third party, all of that. So for me, I don't blame those outside women. I blame the man. It all begins and ends with his decisions. And the reason I truly believe that is time growing up, accepting my role and allowing a man to treat me like that. And also when my ex came to me at the end of his life and admitted that he was wrong and what he had done to me and the kids was terrible and his regrets and for a man even though he was dying and he knew that his time on this earth was limited you know he had a clock ticking but for him to come to me and bear his soul and tell me that he wished he had never done it that his place now when he looks back on the you know in the rear 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 view mirror of his life was with his family he considered us his family and what he had done to us was wrong that's when you know that it all begins and ends with the man you know side chicks yeah they can be bitches and you want to fuck them up for you know being in that relationship with your man but they didn't steal them you know, you know, like my friend refers to them as home wrecking hoes, you know, home wrecking hoes. I, every time my friend says that, it's the way she says it, it just cracks me up. But, you know, I've even had to tell her, you know, those women couldn't wreck anything that was solid. You know, if your man, if they were flouncing all around in front of your man, trying to get him and, you know, he felt a love and a commitment to what you have with him. It would be nothing that they could do to turn his head. And with that, y'all, I'm going to end this video because I have said way too much. But I just want to be honest. When I got that um, post that told me, Rachelle, when you're telling these stories, you know, tell your, your personal, you know, give a bit of your personal life in these because um i think one of my subscribers felt like i was being judgmental on another subject that i was discussing i don't remember what it was you know and when i came back and said i think it was when i did the video about tamar and vince and i was talking about abuse and in that story i did not say you know my personal experience with physical abuse um, and I came back and corrected it and gave my personal story so I said from that point on when I do a video you know such as like a chit chat like this I'm gonna give my personal story hell I'm 52 years old I have nothing to be ashamed of because when you get this age you realize that all of that shit all of that stuff that you went through that you allowed that you you know that happened in your life when you were younger it made you the person that you are today it grew your ass up it taught you lessons and, I, and for that i'm not ashamed of anything you know if anything while i don't want wish you know like people will say if you had to do it all over again would you have stayed with them blah 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 you know i don't want any of that i would in my answer would be no you know when you know better you do better i would not have stayed with him um, if i had to do it all over again knowing what i know now because i know my self-worth and like i said y'all it took me when i'm being honest it took me a long time to let go of the love that i had for that man a long time and even when i broke up with him i'm gonna say you know 
It took me about a year and a half to get him not only out of my head, because my head knew that it was the right thing to do. It was my heart that was having a problem coming along. So my heart, it took about a year and a half for him to be totally out of my heart because I loved him so deeply. And with that, y'all, again, I'm going I'm to end this video because I could go on and on and on. But as always, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And if you stuck with me through the end, I appreciate it even more. You guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.